Who would have thought that the world's youngest serving president would emerge from the heart of Africa? Africa, the second largest continent, is witnessing a remarkable shift, producing young, democratically elected presidents and military leaders who are reshaping their nation's futures. Gone are the days when only old and aged leaders ruled the continent, often completing multiple terms in office. While many African countries still have older presidents in power, a new wave of young, courageous leaders is emerging, and at the forefront of this revolution is Captain Ibrahim Traoré. At just 36 years old, Traoré stands as the world's youngest black-serving president, a powerful and determined man dedicated to the growth and prosperity of his country. In today's mind-boggling video, we'll dive deep into the life of Captain Ibrahim Traoré, exploring his rise to power, his courageous leadership, and the incredible journey that led him to become a beacon of hope for many. Stay with us as we unravel the inspiring story of a young leader who's making history. Without further ado, let's dive right into the details. Ibrahim Traoré, a Burkina Bay military officer, has been the interim leader of Burkina Faso since the coup d'etat on 30 September 2022, which deposed interim president Paul Henri Sandaogo Damiba. At 36 years old, Traoré is currently the world's second youngest serving state leader, following Gabriel Attal, the Prime Minister of France, but he holds the title of the youngest serving president. Born on 14 March 1988 in Kara, Bondokui, Muhun Province, Traoré completed his primary education in Bondokui and attended high school in Bobo Diulasso, where he was recognized as quiet and very talented. Starting in 2006, he studied geology at the University of Ouagadougou and participated in the Association of Muslim Students and the Marxist Association Nationale des Étudiants du Burkina, ANEB. Within ANEB, he became a delegate known for advocating for his peers in conflicts. He graduated from the university with honors. Traoré enlisted in the Burkinabe Army in 2009 and graduated from the George Namawano Military Academy. He underwent anti-aircraft training in Morocco before being assigned to an infantry unit in Kaya, a town in northern Burkina Faso. In 2014, he was promoted to lieutenant and joined MINISMA, the United Nations peacekeeping force engaged in the Mali War. By 2018, he was recognized among the MINISMA soldiers who demonstrated bravery during significant rebel attacks in the Tombuctu region. Returning to Burkina Faso, Traoré participated in operations against the growing jihadist insurgency. He was involved in the Otapuanu Offensive of 2019 at Jibo and other counterinsurgency efforts in the northern part of the country. Promoted to captain in 2020, Traoré later expressed his disillusionment with Burkina Faso's leadership. He observed that while soldiers lacked the necessary equipment, politicians were distributing suitcases of money for bribes. He gradually became the voice for soldiers in the north, who were dissatisfied with the government. Now, let's delve into the details of Ibrahim Traoré's ascent to power. How did he transition from being a captain in Burkina Faso's army to becoming the president and leader of the military junta? Traoré was among the army officers who endorsed the January 2022 coup d'etat in Burkina Faso, which installed the Patriotic Movement for Safeguard and Restoration Military Junta. By March 2022, he was leading an artillery regiment in Kaya. There is some controversy over whether he was ever part of the Cobra Special Forces, a counter-terrorist unit established in 2019. Several sources, including the BBC, Al Jazeera, and Die Tageszeitung, claim he was associated with the unit at some stage. However, Jeune Afrique, a news magazine, reported that he was never affiliated with the Cobras. A significant number of supporters of the January 2022 coup became disillusioned with Paul Henri Sandaogo Damiba, the junta's leader, due to his failure to effectively address the jihadist insurgency. Traoré later asserted that he and other officers had attempted to persuade Damiba to refocus on the rebellion, but ultimately decided to overthrow him as his ambitions were veering away from our objectives. The dissatisfaction was most pronounced among younger officers who were engaged in combat against the rebels on the front lines. Additionally, there were delays in the pay for the Cobra troops. When the conspirators initiated their coup on September 30th, Traoré was still a captain. The operation was executed with the support of the Cobra unit. In the immediate aftermath of the coup, 
Traoré proclaimed himself the new leader of the patriotic movement for safeguard and restoration. On October 6, he also took on the role of interim president as head of state, supreme head of the armed forces. He initially pledged to hold democratic elections in July 2024. However, on May 25, 2024, it was announced that the ruling military junta would be extended for an additional five years and that Traoré would remain in power during this period. In February 2023, the government led by Traoré expelled French military forces that had been aiding Burkina Faso in combating local insurgencies. Traoré then made a public statement emphasizing the need to explore new opportunities and foster mutually beneficial partnerships, advocating for a broader range of international relationships for Burkina Faso. Shortly thereafter, his administration voiced its support for a potential federation between Mali and Guinea, both of which are also under military rule. In April, Traoré announced a general mobilization to bolster the military effort against escalating rebel attacks. He committed to reclaiming all territories under rebel control and asserted that there would be no negotiations with the insurgents until significant progress had been made. The following month, Traoré expressed skepticism about the planned return to democracy by 2024, suggesting that elections could only be feasible once the insurgency was effectively countered and the security situation was stabilized. On September 26, 2023, a faction within the military made an unsuccessful attempt to overthrow Traoré. Subsequently, the Patriotic Movement for Safeguard and Restoration extended the military administration in Burkina Faso by an additional five years in May 2024, while also permitting Traoré to run in the forthcoming presidential elections. To replace the French military forces that he had expelled in February 2023, Traoré began to strengthen relations with Russia. This shift became apparent on July 29, 2023, following the 2023 Russia-Africa summit, where Traoré declared his nation's support for Russia and announced the reopening of the Russian embassy in Burkina Faso, which had been shut since 1992. Upon his return from Russia, Traoré was welcomed in Ouagadougou, Burkina Faso's capital, by enthusiastic supporters, some of whom waved Russian flags. During his visit to Russia, Traoré had a meeting with Vladimir Putin to discuss areas of cooperation with a primary focus on military matters, including the training of Burkinabe officers and cadets at various levels, such as pilots, in Russia. On August 31st, Traoré, the leader of the Burkinabe military coup, hosted a Russian delegation headed by Deputy Defense Minister Yunus Bek Yevkurov. They finalized agreements on future military collaboration, including comprehensive training programs for all Burkinabe soldiers and pilots under Russian supervision. This meeting was built upon earlier discussions between President Putin and Traoré during the Russia-Africa summit held in St. Petersburg in July 2023. Furthermore, on November 7, 2023, Burkina Faso's Minister of Defense and Veteran Affairs, Kasum Kulabali, visited Moscow to meet with the Russian Defense Minister, where they solidified plans to enhance their defense ties. Russia has committed to supporting Burkina Faso across multiple domains such as operations, economics, logistics, technology, and training, and has upheld these commitments. Reports suggest Russia has supplied nearly 1,000 units of ammunition, military equipment, tanks, and helicopters. Moreover, Russia even pledged to provide free grain to Burkina Faso, which ranks among the world's poorest nations. On January 26 of this year, the pledge was fulfilled through an official donation of 25,000 tons of wheat. Currently, entities such as the African Initiative, a group composed of Burkina Bay and Russians dedicated to fostering friendship, mutual understanding, peace and harmony between Burkina Faso and Russia, and Russia's cultural hub, the Russian House, are actively engaged in enhancing Russia's reputation within the nation. This situation prompts inquiries into Russia's motivations for aiding Burkina Faso, sparking debate over their true intentions. Many, particularly among the Burkina Bay populace, attribute Russia's support to Ibrahim Traoré's unwavering efforts in combating terrorism, a challenge previous administrations struggled to effectively confront. Traoré is highly regarded by Burkina Bays as a principled leader who prioritizes national interests over personal gain. 
Burkina Faso is grappling with a severe humanitarian crisis, exacerbated by jihadist insurgency, resulting in over 2 million internally displaced persons and more than 39,000 refugees and asylum seekers. Nevertheless, Traoré remains resolute in his commitment to eradicating insurgency within Burkina Faso. Many residents of Burkina Faso have shared in street interviews that they find Traoré's leadership effective, highlighting a decrease in jihadist attacks. Traoré has also begun to reclaim areas and communities that were previously under jihadist control. A large portion of the population believes that Russia's willingness to support Burkina Faso is due to Ibrahim Traoré's economic management. Before Traoré became president and military leader in 2022, Burkina Faso was grappling with civil unrest, political instability, and a significant downturn in economic growth, particularly in the vital agricultural sector. In 2022, economic growth slowed to 2.5%. According to the World Bank's latest economic update, Burkina Faso had the highest inflation rates among the countries in the West African Economic and Monetary Union. Despite its emerging status as a gold exporter, more than 40% of the population lives below the poverty line. However, since Traoré took office, the country's economy has begun to show signs of improvement. As president, Traoré has maintained his signature enigmatic and highly formal demeanor, a characteristic that preceded his time in office. He has tightly managed his public communications, intentionally shaping an image as a competent war leader, likely to separate himself from the unfavorable views associated with his predecessors. In November 2023, Burkina Faso's Council of Ministers sanctioned the creation of the nation's first gold refinery. This achievement marks significant progress in the country's gold sector, aimed at capitalizing on the expanding gold mining industry. Traoré's goal is to gain more control over Burkina Faso's gold resources by refining the gold domestically rather than exporting it in its unprocessed form. This strategy is expected to increase government revenue and optimize economic benefits from the gold industry. The new refinery is projected to create 100 direct jobs and 5,000 indirect jobs, with a production capacity of 400 kilos of gold per day. Additionally, in January 2024, Burkina Faso reached another notable milestone in its mining sector with the inauguration of an advanced mine tailings treatment plant developed with local technology. This facility is designed to improve resource recovery and support better environmental practices. The main objective is to efficiently recover metals from different types of mine tailings, including fine coal, slag, ash, and acid concentrates. This strategy aims to minimize waste while maximizing the value obtained from Burkina Faso's mining resources, as well as reducing the environmental impact of conventional disposal methods. The initiative highlights Burkina Faso's commitment to a self-reliant approach in its mining industry, emphasizing the use of local expertise and technology for sustainable resource management. If successful, the plant could boost Burkina Faso's mining sector by enhancing profitability, promoting environmental sustainability through waste reduction, and encouraging technological innovation in mining. In February 2024, Traoré ordered a stop to the issuance of export permits for small-scale private gold production. This move was reportedly aimed at combating illegal trade and reforming the artisanal gold sector, which has issues with gold smuggling, tax evasion, and regulatory non-compliance. This suspension aims to limit these activities and ensure that the gold exported is accurately documented, thereby boosting government revenue. The government hopes that this suspension will create a more organized and transparent system for exporting gold from small-scale producers. Under the two-year leadership of Ibrahim Traoré, Burkina Faso has experienced significant development. Now, this raises crucial questions. Would Burkina Faso have achieved this progress if Ibrahim Traoré had spent on lavish Toyota SUVs for every governor, minister, senator, and legislator, as many African leaders tend to do? Would the impoverished nation have advanced if Traoré had kept a costly entourage with a collection of luxury vehicles worth hundreds of thousands of dollars? Regrettably, numerous African leaders, including former military rulers and present democratic presidents, focus on enriching themselves and their close associates, neglecting their countries. Consequently, many African nations grow poorer each year as their leaders deplete their economies. 
In Africa, a profound scarcity of employment opportunities and financial resources compels many to seek livelihoods elsewhere. Consequently, numerous Africans embark on hazardous journeys across the Mediterranean and through deserts to Europe. This migration is driven by the dearth of jobs and the misallocation of national funds by African leaders, who often prioritize personal indulgence over fostering employment. However, Ibrahim Traoré, a youthful president with less than three years in office, has garnered considerable support both domestically and from Russia, owing to his earnest initiatives. Known for his bold stance, Traoré notably condemned neocolonialism and urged fellow African leaders to refrain from backing Western proxies during the July 2023 Russia-Africa summit. He also urged the African Union to abstain from condemning Africans who opt to oppose these puppet governments. During the Russia-Africa summit, Ibrahim Touré, leader of Burkina Faso's military junta, highlighted escalating insecurity in his country, a former French colony. He discussed the jihadist insurgency affecting Burkina Faso and neighboring African nations such as Niger, Mali, and Chad. He firmly stated that French forces had completely failed to manage the jihadist insurgency in Burkina Faso, prompting him to expel them. In February 2023, Traoré's administration ousted French forces assisting in local counterinsurgency efforts. Many Burkinabe citizens had staged prolonged protests against the French military presence, criticizing Paris for inadequately addressing the terrorist threat and accusing French troops of arming jihadists. In an impassioned speech during a plenary session with 17 other African leaders chaired by Russian President Vladimir Putin on Friday, Traoré condemned Western imperialist powers and their African collaborators for exploiting the continent's natural resources and perpetuating poverty and suffering among ordinary people. Dressed in his full gray and dark green military uniform, topped with a dark red beret, Traoré articulated his and his people's desire to uncover why Africa, despite its vast natural resources and inherent wealth, remained the poorest continent. He highlighted the continent's endowment of essential resources such as water and sunlight and questioned, why is Africa a starving continent? Why are our leaders traveling globally to seek aid? These are the questions we have, and the answers remain elusive. In a passionate and direct speech, Ibrahim Traoré, the Burkinabe military leader, framed the Russia-Africa summit in St. Petersburg, Russia, as a pivotal opportunity for the continent to forge new alliances. He expressed a strong belief that these emerging Russia-Africa connections could potentially transform the future of Africans. Traoré underscored that Africans had endured the most severe forms of neo-colonialism and slavery over the years. At the summit, he defended the recent series of coups in West Africa, contending that those who failed to resist their Western-dominated governments were unworthy of sympathy. Traoré articulated his views, emphasizing, a slave who does not resist deserves no sympathy. The African Union should refrain from criticizing Africans who choose to resist their Western-backed governments. Military junta leader Ibrahim Touré called upon African leaders to prioritize achieving self-sufficiency in their nations. Traoré concluded with a quote from Cuban revolutionary Ernesto Che Guevara, prompting summit journalists and observers to draw parallels to former Burkina Faso President Thomas Sankara. Touré affirmed that his administration would foster substantial development in Burkina Faso and emphasized that aligning with Russia would bolster the country's essential progress. Since assuming power in 2022, Traoré's leadership has significantly boosted Burkina Faso's economy. While many view Ibrahim Traoré as a commendable leader with a sincere commitment to his nation's advancement, he has nevertheless encountered substantial criticism. Reuters and the New York Times have reported that Traoré has faced suspicions and criticism for alleged ties to the Russian mercenary organization Wagner Group due to his public expressions of anti-French sentiment and pro-Russian stance. The Ghanaian government has publicly accused Traoré of starting a collaboration with the Wagner Group after the coup, using the mercenaries in the fight against jihadist rebels. Although Traoré has refuted these allegations by asserting that our Wagner is the VDP, Referring to the volunteers for the defense of the homeland, there are events that cast doubt on his claims. In January 2024, Russia deployed 100 military personnel to Burkina Faso, representing a notable shift in international alliances and generating numerous questions. These soldiers are part of the newly established Russian Africa Corps, 
replacing the infamous Wagner group of mercenaries, whose motives and objectives remain largely unknown. The Russian government has consistently denied funding the Wagner group, but recent evidence contradicts this claim. The group in question is known for using Russian military equipment, weapons, and helicopters, and many of its members have passports issued by the Russian government. Despite Wagner's current absence in Burkina Faso, a similar situation is unfolding there, albeit with little international attention. Burkina Faso has unwittingly become a testing ground for Russia's presence post prigozhin with direct involvement from the Russian state itself. Despite Russia's denial of financing the Wagner Group and Burkina Faso's leader Ibrahim Trouré's denial of the involvement of Wagner mercenaries in counteracting jihadist insurgency, there are credible reports of the Russian African Corps training Burkinabe soldiers and pilots. Following the death of Yevgeny Prigozhin in a plane crash near Moscow in August 2023, the future of the Wagner Group remains uncertain, raising questions about its potential for continuity or new leadership. Amidst this ambiguity, there is speculation that former members of Wagner might now be involved with the newly established Russian African Corps. Should this speculation prove accurate, Burkina Faso must approach any dealings with caution, as neither the Wagner Group nor the Russian African Corps can be completely trusted. Additionally, critics of Traoré have voiced concerns over his decision to expel Western forces and strengthen ties with Russia. They argue that Russia's intentions are not genuinely focused on addressing Africa's insurgency issues or supporting the continent, but rather on exploiting Africa's natural resources and extending its influence and control in the same manner as the Western powers. As we wrap up today's video, it's clear that Captain Ibrahim Traoré is not just the world's youngest black-serving president, but also a remarkable leader who has made significant strides for Burkina Faso. Under his leadership, the country has seen impressive economic growth and a notable reduction in jihadist insurgency. Traoré has also garnered immense support from the Burkinabe people. His bold and passionate speech at the Russia-Africa summit exemplified his courage and commitment to challenging the Western world's exploitation of Africa's resources. Despite facing criticism and numerous challenges, Traoré remains a visionary leader whose actions and words continue to stir global conversations about Africa's future. Now we want to hear from you. What are your thoughts on Ibrahim Traoré's leadership and his impact on Burkina Faso? Do you see him as a trailblazer for change or a controversial figure? Share your insights in the comments below. We're eager to read your thoughts. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons and turn on the notification bell to stay updated with our latest content. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next video.